Hello viewers, welcome back to this course. In this lesson, we are going to discuss about the date diff function in Excel. The date diff function calculates the difference between two dates in various units like years, months, or days. It computes the time interval between two dates in a specified unit of measurement and returns a number representing the difference in the specified unit. The date diff function is one of the undocumented functions in Excel, which means that you would not find any help on this function from Microsoft or see this as a part of the intelligence when you type it in a cell in Excel. But when it comes to calculating the total years of services between two dates, this is the best function to use. This is the syntax of the date diff function. The first argument you pass into the date diff function is the start date. The start date is a date serial number or date string that Excel can recognize. The second argument you pass into the date diff function is the end date. The end date is a date serial number or date string that Excel can recognize. The last argument you pass into the date diff function is the unit. The unit represents a text string that specifies the time unit for the result. We have various types of unit that you can pass into the date diff function. One of it is the Y. The Y represents the number of complete years in the period. You can also pass the M. The M represents the number of complete months in the period. You also have the D. The D is the number of days in the period. We have the MD. The MD allows the function to return the difference in days, excluding years and months. We also have the YM. The YM allows the function to return the difference in months, excluding the years. We also have the YD. The YD allows the function to return the difference in days, excluding years. This is the example of the date diff function. If you pass the date function with this date argument as the start date and another date function with this date argument as the end date and the y as the unit, the function is going to return 23, which represents the number of complete years between January 1st, 2000 and July 1st, 2023. Let me show you more tips about the date diff function. The date diff function is not listed in Excel function list but still work in modern version of Excel. It is particularly useful for calculating ages, tenure, or time span in a specific unit. The function always returns a positive integer even if the end date is earlier than the start date. The MD, YM, and the YD unit are useful for breaking down time period into more specific components. The date diff function handles the leap years correctly. For date, use the date function or a recognized Excel date format to ensure accurate calculations. For you to understand all these logics better, let's jump into Excel. I open Excel. We are going to work with a lot of examples here, but before then, I'm going to show you how the date diff function works in background. I have a table of data here. I also have some other examples here. We're going to practice with each of them. I have the start date here. I also have the end date. I have the unit, and also we are going to show the result here. We are going to experiment with different units that we have here so that you understand it better. Before we start to make use of the date diff function to perform our calculation, I'm going to show you how to perform these calculations without using the date diff function so that you will know exactly what the date diff function is doing in background. This cell that contains the start date and this cell contains the end date, let us get the difference in years. Okay, I'm going to get the difference in years here. Let me duplicate this uh, description here and move it here. Let us calculate the difference in years between this two dates that I have here. I have the start date and the end date and to calculate the difference in years what I need to do is to select this cell 
I go to the formula bar. I'm going to use the year function to get the different in years. Okay, I type the year. I'm going to pass the end date, close it. I'm going to subtract the start date so that I will know the number of years between these two dates. So I type minus, then year function again. I'm going to find the start date, close the function and press enter. You see it return four. It simply means the difference between these two dates in years is four years. You can see the year of the start date is 2020 and the year of the end date is 2024. So the difference is four years. So that is exactly what we get here. This is because it is the only the years that we consider. Okay, we only get the years. Now let us get the difference in months. The M represents the number of complete months in the period. So the number of the month is what it is going to consider. And to get the number of the months, I select this cell, I go to the formula bar, I type equals to, we are going to select this cell that contain our date, that is the end date, then I'm going to subtract the start date. Let me press enter now, it is going to give me the number of days. You can see it gives me the number of days between these two dates. Since our consign is to get the number of the months, I'm going to divide the result by 30 or 31, assuming that each month is 31 days. I'm going to enclose this one inside parentheses like this, divide it by 30, assuming that each month is treated as 31st day, so, so that I'm going to have a decimal number. I press enter, do you see it gave me 58, 58.7. Now this 57 is in decimal place. Let us round it up. I'm going to enclose the result inside the round function. I type round. The round function is going to take two arguments. We have already passed the result of our calculation. So I'm going to separate it with comma. The number of digits represent the decimal places that you want. If I want a two decimal places, I can type two, close the function and press enter. You see it return 58.7. But since I don't want the decimal place, I'm going to type zero. I change the two to zero and press enter now, it will give me 59 months, okay? It simply means that the number of the month between the start date and the end date is 59 months, okay? Let us get the number of days between the start date and the end date. I select this cell, I go to the formula bar, I type equals to, I select the end date, I'm going to subtract the start date, minus, I select the cell that contains the start date, and the result is going to be in days, okay? I press enter now. Do you see that it gives me the number of days? This 1820 is the number of days between the start date and the end date we have here. Let us get the number of days excluding the years and months. It simply means that we only consider the days, we are not considering the years and the months. You can see in our start date, the day is first. Then we also have the day in the end date, which is going to be 25. So if we were to get the difference between the two days, we are not considering the months and we are also not considering the years, okay? So to do that, I'm going to use the day function. I select this cell, I go to the formula bar, I type equals to day. We are going to use the day function to get the day of the end date close it. If I show you the day of the end date now, let's see what we have. You see we have 25. Okay, that is the day of the end date. Let us subtract the day of the start date. I'm going to modify my formula here. I type minus the day of the start date. Day, I'm going to pass the start date inside the day, close it and press enter. You see that it gives me 24. It simply means that when we are not considering the years and the month, we only calculated the difference between the days of the two dates. You can see from the date of the end date, we have 25 as the number of days. And for the start date, we have one as the number of day. It simply means that when we subtract the one from 25, we have 24. Now let us get the difference between the months excluding the years. So I select this cell, I go to the formula bar, 
I'm going to use the month function to get the month of the end date. I type equals to month. I pass the end date. You can see the month of the end date is 12, which is December. Let me close the function and press enter. Do you see it returned 12? But now we want to get the difference. I'm going to subtract the month of the start date. I type minus month. I'm going to pass the start date, close the function and press enter. Do you see it returned 11? It simply means that when we are not considering the years, we get 11. That is the difference between the months of the end date and the start date. The next one we have here is the difference in days excluding years. What this means is that we are going to calculate the difference between the days excluding the years. I select this cell, I go to the formula bar, we are going to use the date function to get the difference. I'm going to type equals to date. Inside the date function, we need to pass the year. We are going to use the year function to get the year of the end date. I type year. Inside the year function, we are going to pass the year of the start date. I select this cell close the function then separate it with comma the next argument is the month so i'm going to type the month i'm going to pass the end date so that we get the month from it close the function separate it with comma then the day i'm going to use the day function to get the day then inside the day function i also need to pass the end date close the function and close the date function let's see what we have do you see that they return 25th December 2020? Let me change this date to serial number by changing the format to general. So let me change it to general. Okay, I have a serial number of the date. Now that I have the serial number of the date, let me subtract the start date now so that we see what it is going to return. I modify the function. I type minus the start date. This is our start date. I select it and press enter now. Do you see that it returned 359 days? It simply means that difference between the days when the year is not considered, it is 359 days, okay? With this understanding, let us go and make use of the date day function to perform our calculation so that you will see how easy it is to perform the same calculation using the date day function. Let me select this cell. I go to the formula bar. I type equals to date div. Do you notice that when I'm typing the date div, it is not showing here, okay? That is what we mean by undocumented. You can see that uh, it is not among the Excel building function. But keep on typing. Okay, this is it, date div. Then open the bracket. And the first argument we pass is the start date. This is our start date here. I separate it with comma. The second argument is the end date. I'm going to pass the end date, separate it with comma. We need to pass the unit. Let's start by experimenting with different unit. Let me pass the cell that contains the unit. I select this cell. Then let me close the function now and press enter. Do you see that it returned four, okay? Simply means that the difference between these two dates is four years. That is exactly what we get when we did it manually here. If I change the Y to M, you can see that M is the number of complete months in the period. So let me change it to M and press enter. You see it returns 59. And that is exactly what we get when we did it manually here. You see that by using the date div function, we can be able to perform the same calculation. It simply means that the number of months between these two two dates is 59 months. Let me change it to D and the D stands for the number of days in the period. That is the number of total days between the start date and the end date. Let me change it to D. Press enter. Do you see the return 1820 exactly what we have here. You can see that performing the same calculation we did here in background. The next unit we have is the MD. And the MD stands for the different in days, excluding years and months. So the different in days, let me type MD and press enter. You see it returned 24. 
It simply means that the function is considering only the days. It is not considering the years and the months. So that is the difference of what we have here, which is 24. You can see visibly from the end date, the days is 25 for the end date and it subtracted the one from the start date, which is first. So that's why we get 24. Let's experiment with another unit, YM. YM represents the difference in months, excluding the years. It simply means that it is only going to consider only the months. Let's change the unit to YM. Change it to YM and press enter. It will return 11. It simply means that it consider only the months. From the end date, we have the month is 12. And the start date, the month is 1, which is January and December. So it subtracted the 1 from December, which we have 11 which represent 11 months, okay? So that's what we have. Then we have the YD. It may look complicated when we did it here, but with the practice, you can be able to understand it, okay? Let's change the unit to YD and see what is going to return. Let me change it to YD like this and press enter. Do you see that it returned 359? And this 359 represent the number of days when the years is not considered. It simply means that it's only considering the days excluding the years. The difference between the days without considering the years is 359 days. So instead of you to do it manually just the way we did it here, the date D function allows you to perform all this calculation we did here by just passing the argument that you want and you'll be able to get the type of the uh, unit that you want. With these examples and illustration, let us do more practice. I have this table here. I have the start date, I have the end date. I also have different unit here. So let us get the result depending on the unit we have here. Okay, I select this cell, I go to the formula bar, I type equals to date div. Then the first argument is going to be the start date. I separate it with comma, then pass the end date, separate it with comma, and also pass the unit and close the function and press enter. It will return 4. If I want to get other values depending on the unit argument, let me use the auto fill like this. And here we have it, have the different value depending on the unit that we needed, okay? All right, let us practice with more data I have here. This session, we're going to calculate service duration to today. Have the names of people, I have the date of joining. We have today's date, we have the year of service, and also going to show the formula. Let's start by getting today's date. I'm going to use the today function to get today's date. I select this cell, I type equals to today, press enter, and then it returns today's date. So let me use the auto field to get others like this. Let us get the years of service. I'm going to use the date div function to do that. I select this cell, I go to the formula bar, I'm going to type equals to date div. The first argument is the start date. I'm going to pass this cell that contains the joining date. So separate it with comma. I can equally type today function here as the end date. Let me change it to the cell that contains the today's date so that we can change it dynamically. I select this cell that contains today's date. The next argument is going to be the unit. Since our major concern is to get the years of service between these two dates, I'm going to type Y. Y represent the years. Close the function and press enter. You see it returns the number of years between these two dates. 24 years. Simply means that this, this person is in service for 24 years. If I want to get the years of others, I need to use the auto field. Let me use the auto field like this. This is it. We have different years. I have different years of services depending on when the person joined the department. Now let me quickly show you the formula. I select this cell, I go to the formula bar, I'm going to use the formula text. I type formula text. Let me pass this cell that contain our formula. Close it and press enter. This is it here. Then let me use the auto field to get the rest like this. You can see we have the formulas with the argument we're passing to it, okay? Then let me show you more example. Calculate age in years, month, and days. 
we have the names of people, we have the date of birth, we are going to get the age in years, month and days. So this is the format we are going to display the result. For example, if person is 14 years, he's going to say 14 years, 5 months, 8 days. That is what we are going to do in this session. And to do that, I select the cell for the first person. I go to the formula bar. I'm going to type equals to, let's get the years. I type date div. I need to pass the date of birth as first argument. I select this cell, separate it with comma. The end date is going to be today. I'm going to get the age based on today's date as the end date. I type today, separate it with comma. We need to get the year. I type Y as the third argument. Close it and press enter. It will return 24. But we are going to return a string. We are going to return a string 14 years, 5 months, 8 days. So that's what we are going to return. So I'm going to concat a string to the result. So we have already gotten the years, which is now this one. So I'm going to concat a string of years by using the upper sand like this i open quotation mark and type years close the quotation mark let me press enter now do you see it return 24 years now let us get the month part to get the month part i select this cell let's modify it let me modify the formula let's concatenate the result of the date d function once again let's concatenate it like this i type date diff I select the start date, separate it with comma, and the end date is going to be today. I type today, then separate it with comma. Then our unit, since our major concern is to get the month section, from our definition here, you can see to get only the month section, we need to type the YM, which is the difference in months. I type YM like this. Let me close the date D function. Then, since it is the month, I'm going to concatenate the month string like this. Let me press enter and see what it is going to return now. This is what it will return. Let me align this so that we show all the text. You can see 24 years, 7 months. So let's add some space. So I select this cell. Let's add some space. Let me add the comma after the years and space. And also add space after the months like this and press enter now you can see 24 years 7 months now let's get the day part let's get the day part to get the day part let concatenate the date div function once again like this date div let me pass the start date separate it with comma the end date is going to be today separate it with comma so since our major concern is to get the number of days uh, the difference between the days and you can see from here you can see that the difference in days excluding years and months which is md so our third argument is going to be md i'm going to type it md md like this close the function let me concatenate the day string like this string like this days old let me press enter now let's see what it is going to return you see that 24 years, 7 months, 80 days old. Let's add space before the days. Modify it. Add some space. Space like this. And this is it. You can see that 12 years, 7 months, 80 days old. Today's date is 9th of August. You can see a person born on 1st of January 2000 is 24 years, 7 months, 80 days old today. Okay, this is because today has not finished. That's why it is returning 80 days. Let me use the auto field to get the age of other people. Let me use the auto field like this. Here we have it. The age of other people are now showing. You can see this person is 18 years, 5 months, 80 days. You can see this person is 2 years, 11 months, 30 days old. And see another person is 33 years, 7 months, 28 days old. You can see that you can be able to use the date diff function to calculate the differences between the start date and the end date. Now let me show you the formula that I use here. I select this, uh, I go to the formula bar, I type equals to formula text. So let me pass this cell that contain our formula. 
close the function and press enter okay this is the formula guys in case if you want to type the formula this is the formula we use here okay so let me quickly format this cell let me use this formatting i have here to format this cell like this let me format it so this is it okay let me use the auto fill now to get the rest like this let me apply the same format like this and here we have it in case if you want to type the formula you can type it in the practical session we are going to practice with more data i hope with these examples and illustration you can be able to use the date diff function to calculate the difference between the start date and the end date of an event based on different unit argument thank you for watching this section